Good morning and welcome to the third meeting in 2017 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. Can I remind everyone present to switch off mobile phones and other de devices to silent? Uh, agenda item one in today's committee is uh, to take evidence on three proposed cross-party groups. The first group we have to consider today is proposed CPG on commercial sexual exploitation and I would like to welcome Ash Denham to the meeting. Uh, Ash um, uh, is to be a co-convener of the group and um, I would like to invite you to make an opening statement. Thank you convener, good morning. Um, it was expected that it would be Rhoda Grant with you here this morning but unfortunately she has had a family member taken ill so I agreed to step in in her place. Um, I have an opening statement, is it okay if I go ahead and read that? Um, the intention of the proposed group is to provide a forum for those who are concerned about commercial sexual exploitation, CSE, um, to meet, to discuss the issue and to work together to raise awareness of the issue. It's recognised as violence against women under Equally Safe, but while progress has been made in raising awareness of domestic abuse and sexual assault, we've not had the same focus on CSE. We need to tackle violence against women in order to achieve a truly equal society. Um, I realise there are a large number of cross-party groups already, but I think it's important to be able to explore this issue further. Our application, um, which I assume you have a copy of, gives a list of a number of organisations that are interested, um, and also individual members who wish to join, and it gives a list of um, MSPs who have supported us, and I also have another few MSPs to add to that list. Um, does your list contain Joanne Lamont's name? It does? Okay, so you've got that one. Um, so then it would be Kate Forbes, um, SNP MSP, and Joan McAlpine, SNP MSP. Thank you very much. Um, can I invite any questions from the, the group? Yeah, Mr Stewart. Thank you, Convener. Thank you, Ash. You've already identified that there may be some overlap with others, and I think that that's quite important that you have because you will learn from what they've done and the experiences they've had. Can I also ask what connection you will have with Police Scotland in the process, and are they going to be part of your investigation or part of the team that's going to come on and give you information about what they're doing uh, in, across the whole of Scotland to try and manage the process and also tackle what's happening on the UK by basis as well? Um, I've only had contact with the police informally, so um, I, we haven't actually thought at this point about whether we would um, involve them, but certainly I think that's a good suggestion. Okay. Um, other groups that we're aware of, obviously, that would maybe um, cover similar ground would be the Men's Violence Against Women group. Um, and also um, the human trafficking group. So I'm co-convener of human trafficking as well. Um, and I've also spoken to men's violence against women. Um, I believe I wasn't at that meeting, but I believe at the last meeting of that group, it was agreed that both of these groups would work together. Um, but not all the stakeholders in that group agree with the aims of this group, um, but they wish as well. Okay. Thank you, convener. Are there any further questions? Mr Harvey? Thanks. Good morning. Um, Looking at the terms of reference you've proposed, it seems fairly clear that the group is intended to be explicitly a group supporting a particular model of legislation of criminalising demand. Uh, I'm just wondering how uh, that's going to work if members who don't support that choose to become involved. Obviously, all MSPs have the right to join any cross-party group, uh, and this particular proposal is one that's been considered in a previous session and legislation not supported by Parliament. So uh, is this group intended to be open to people who have an interest in the subject and wish to discuss it from a range of different perspectives or only a space for discussion from one particular viewpoint? Um, I'm not... Are the rules are that CPGs need to be open to... I'm not entirely sure what the rules are on CPGs. Those are entitled to join okay, any well, CPG. In that case, then, that obviously, that if that's the rules, that would be, that would be um, how it would have to go forward. Um, I would assume that people who supported the aims would be more interested in joining it, but obviously we couldn't exclude people who had held, you know, opposite views. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any further questions? Can I thank the member for her attendance this morning? Um, the decision will be taken at agenda item two in our proceedings today, and you'll be informed as quickly as possible of the results. But thank you very much. I'm going to suspend shortly until our witnesses to change over.
Thank you. The second group for the committee's consideration is the proposed CPG on end-of-life choices. I would like to welcome George Adam, FSP, to the meeting. Uh, George is the proposed convener of the group, and I would like to invite Mr Adam to make an opening statement. Thank you, convener. Well, the whole idea for the end-of-life uh, choices CPG is effectively to give a forum. We've obviously had two bills appear before the Parliament which weren't supported. One, both were came from Margot MacDonald and then Patrick took on after Margot passed away. And I think uh, we had open debates during there, but we've never got by stage one. And part of the, I believe that CPG would be, let's have these robust discussions about this very kind of passionate kind of subject and let's have it in a cross-party group so that some of the politicians, because the public, time and time again, we're told the public actually support this idea. So I think in order to get the politicians in line with the public uh, ideal, uh, I think we have to have this cross-party group in order to have the debate. And that would include uh, people being involved that aren't for the actual idea as well, because I think we'd be fooling ourselves having there talking to the converted every single quarter. So the whole idea is so that we get to, if there is another case when we have a bill coming forward, then we have the opportunity to get beyond stage one and not behind, hide behind uh, various issues like legal. You know, I think one of the problems was in stage one the last time was people kept saying there was uh, legal problems and there was all, we wouldn't pass any bills past stage one in this place if we actually kind of used that as a reference all the time. So I think uh, we have to look at it. Uh, this is an opportunity for everybody to have open, frank discussion with regards to the subject. For me personally, it's a very personal subject to me because my wife says says MS. And obviously it's something that she has to look at possibly if her, she goes from secondary progressive to primary progressive MS. So yes, I do have a very personal need for it, but that's part of the reason why I'm trying to take the sting out the tail almost in the debate and have it in a cross-party group so we can have these discussions and then hopefully who knows what could happen in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Um, can I invite any questions? Uh, Ms Hockey. Um. Thank you, convener, and uh, thank you, uh, George, for coming along and speaking to us today about the CPG. I'm just looking at your membership list here, um, and you have uh, one individual named and two organisations, and I was uh, wondering what uh, proposals you have for broadening the uh, membership of the proposed group. As I stated uh, earlier, the whole idea is to make sure that we do have other organisations involved. I would say probably uh, we're, we're looking towards get some of the more religious groups involved as well, because that was one of the groups, not all, but some of the religious groups were some of the ones that were very passionate against the idea. And I, as I've said earlier on, Claire, it would be just stupid of me to sit there every quarter and talk to the converted. This is about getting an idea, taking this idea, running with it, taking a lot of the scared stories out of it and actually saying, let's have an open, frank discussion about that. So yes, we would be looking towards actually getting a, uh, anyone else involved. We've already had some individuals who were vehemently against uh, the idea of turning up at meetings. And yes, that means it's difficult for me as a chair to uh, have the meeting, but you know, you, you can't actually change people's way of thinking without getting involved in a bit of passion. Absolutely. Can I ask the, just uh, another question, convener? Thank you. And uh, there obviously have been some uh, countries that have legalised assisted dying. And I was wondering um, what uh, plans you had for reaching out to organisations, perhaps in those countries or other jurisdictions, to find out how, how they've managed, obviously, these very difficult arguments perhaps some time ago. I've already been in touch with... Uh, uh, people in, from Catalonia who have uh, been going down this route as well. We've had a, a, a meeting with uh, individuals from there. We're also talking of uh, going, there's a conference uh, abroad where uh, I think it's in Italy, is it Stacey? Uh -huh. Just uh, Stacey will tell me keep me writing this one, where we're going to actually discuss uh, that as well. So, you know, we are looking at uh, other places where this has uh, obviously worked out and uh, we, that's ongoing. And we actually, we've had a few speakers already from people who have attended meetings who have been from abroad. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr Stewart. Mm -hmm. Thank you, convener. Thank you, George. I, I very much welcome the dialogue that you're trying to embrace here because I do believe that that is the right way to tackle it, is to embrace both sides of the debate and see how, how, how things can progress. But when it comes to the legal and the medical matters, it, sometimes there's a fear uh, in the community and, and we understand that the community want it there's a a, a a sea of opinion out there that people believe this is the right way to go uh, but how are you going to 
manage that because, as I say, the, the legal and the medical side seem to be the blocks that seem to have stopped us so far from progressing. Uh, and there's a fear about that across uh, potentially the political situations in here. Uh, and it's how you bridge that gap. Ironically, the fear is with the politicians. Uh, it's actually not so much with the members of the public. Uh, the more or less attitude tends to be just get on with it, you know, do the right thing and get on with it. Uh, but uh, we have a situation where uh, our last meeting that we had, we had a discussion where, along the lines we had someone who was coming from the legal aspect because I know that is, we have to get that at stage one. If we were putting another bill forward, you would have to make sure that you had it robust enough to be able to deal with that. And that's one of the major hurdles that we have to do. But as I've already said, you know, if we use that as a, a rule of thumb for just about every other bill that we're passing, normally it's stage two that you start ironing out all these issues and uh, stage three as well, you know, uh, we have that system for a reason. And uh, I think it's actually, uh, if, we, if we did that with every kind of bit of legislation, there wouldn't be much passed here. Uh, so I think uh, this is one where we need to take this thing out. We need to have that discussion. But we need to, well, that's why we've, stuck, we've been talking to, we've made sure we've had representations and we will continue from people from a legal aspect who are, have no opinion. They're just coming from the legal aspect. And uh, I think that's an important one for us. Don't get me wrong, the members that are part of the CPG might kind of feel that that's not what they want to hear. But I think we have to take on everyone else's views as well. But the important thing is, is to fear with the politicians that's the issue. Thank you. Okay. Mr Johnson. Thank you. Um, first of all, I, mean, I think I uh, commend you, I think, on the intent. I think using CPGs to do the sort of the, 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 the debate and discussion and actually seeking to build consensus, I think, makes an awful lot of sense. I think that we, we, there are an awful lot of CPGs, and I, and I think um, the usefulness of that approach, uh, I think, is, is uh, I think, well made. However, I mean, I think it, it's pretty clear that the CPG is, is being uh, founded from a particular standpoint, um, and I would just, you say that you, you're keen to take evidence from both legal and clinical people. I mean, what steps would you take, will you take to actually uh, bring in members from those perspectives? <clears throat> and likewise, uh, I would just like to understand one of what your approach is in terms of exploring um, issues around palliative care and, and quality at end of life, because I think that's another very critical issue in terms of, I think, the, 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 the wider issues around this topic. You bring up a very, very important point. Uh, I think part of the ideal that we were talking about was to go down the idea of palliative care and choices. It's end of life choices. You know, uh, it's uh, it, that choice may not be everyone is going to have an assisted uh, death in any shape or form. It could be to ensure the palliative care. I'm going to speak at an event that's about palliative care and end of life choices. Uh, uh, later on, uh, well, probably at the end of this quarter. So it's uh, it's about having everyone involved in the debate. And also, I would see us probably doing a bit of uh, work with the CPG on palliative care as well. Uh, we've already had some members of that CPG attend uh, one of our preliminary meetings as well. So I, I could see there'd be a lot of crossover there for us. But it's back down to what I've said right from the start. It's about building the consensus. I'm aware... I used to be a member of this committee. I, I'm aware that there's a lot of CPGs, but I think uh, when I tend to do a CPG, it's got to be focused. It's got to actually <coughs> want an outcome. And at the end of the year, we've not just sat around the table and said, oh, aren't we all very nice and doing a wonderful job? There's actually something we've done. And uh, I think this is one of the ones. Yes, I'm, I've got emotional baggage with this one because it means a lot to me as well. But I think it's very important that uh, that's the reason why everybody's so passionate about it on both sides. And I think we've got to get everyone round the table and actually discuss that openly and frankly. And then we get to the stage where the politicians aren't quite as scared because they say, well, we've had that debate before we get to stage one. You know, so the, for me, it's a case of looking at other parts of the world and seeing what they've done. And it's about uh, equality and uh, respect to people's wishes. Uh, are there any further questions? Um, well, um, Mr Adam, thank you very much for your attendance at committee this morning. We will deliberate on the proposal at uh, agenda item two. And you'll be informed of our decision as quickly as possible. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. I'll suspend briefly to allow witnesses to change over.
Um, the final group for the committee's consideration this morning is the proposed CPG on heart disease and stroke. And I would welcome Marie Todd, MSP, to the meeting. Uh, Marie will be the proposed convener of the group, and I'd like to invite Ms Todd to make uh, an opening statement. Thank you, convener. Um, this is a cross-party group which was in existence in the last parliament, um, and I was first asked to convene it during the summer, but I suggested that we hang back at pause and have a look at the other cross-party groups that came forward to see if the, the issues that we wanted to cover were being covered already. And what we found when we did meet uh, in the autumn was that there was actually sufficient interest in starting a cross-party group and also sufficient uh, room for a cross-party group specifically on heart disease. So despite a huge decline in mortality, um, there's been massive advances in the treatment of acute cardiac um, disease. There's, there's still um, a, a real burden of um, morbidity associated with it. So there's a number of people who have had strokes who are surviving them now. And much of our focus, I think, going forward would be on looking um, at the access, you know, the changes that are happening in healthcare from acute to um, health and social care integration and looking at issues of inequity of access around the whole of Scotland to things like cardiac rehabilitation. There was also specific cardiac conditions that we felt warranted looking at, so there was a lot of interest in um, looking at atrial fibrillation and looking at screening for that particular condition. So I think that are, although massive progress has been made, I think there's still room for more improvement and that warrants getting um, people together in a room to discuss what we can do about it. Thank you very much. Uh, can I invite any questions from members? None whatsoever. Um, <laughs> I thank uh, you very much for coming along to committee this morning. Very comprehensive outline of um, where you want to go with this CPG. Um, we will make our deliberations at agenda item two and you'll be informed of our decision as quickly as possible. Thank you for your attendance this morning. Thank you. Now move to agenda item two, uh, which is consideration of the proposed CPGs this morning. And can I first turn to the CPG on commercial sexual exploitation and invite any comments? Oh, oh Mr. Harvey. Um, yeah, I mean, there's clearly a number of groups uh, which have existed for uh, a long time in the, the parliament, which have, uh, rather than the general exploration of a topic have a particular political stance. Uh, nuclear disarmament, uh, civil nuclear power, uh, issues like that. Uh, and I think there's, uh, there's perhaps just a need to uh, remind members who are setting up a group with that kind of purpose uh, of the fact that all members, regardless of their political viewpoint on the issues, are entitled to join any CPG that they want. Uh, you know, clearly that wasn't the expectation from the, the, the member who was proposing this, this CPG. I don't think there's any barrier to having groups that have that kind of uh, uh, particularly, you know, not impartial viewpoint. I don't think there's any barrier to setting them up, but uh, I think it should be understood that uh, they can't restrict their membership to, to, to members who subscribe to that viewpoint. Mr. Scott? I think Patrick's touched a point, and maybe you would advise me, convener. But are we seeing a slight change in the in the intention of cross-party groups that they now be coming campaigning groups for mm. legislative sort of tr on Trojan horse is an unfair description, but um, campaigning for an end a legislative end point is that something we're seeing more of. Is it something we would welcome? Um, I'm, I'm, I, I'll merely pose the question. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. passing yeah. a judgment or an implied judgment. Uh, um, I want to ask the clerks to come in on this as well, but um, if you look at some of the legislation that's come, um, you know, smoking ban, started CPG on smoking, um, the trafficking bill as well came largely through a lot of the work. So I don't think it's it's an unusual situation. Yeah. Um, but I'll just get, ask the clerks if they've got any um, indication of, of, of this as a trend in CPGs. Um, it's it's um, not possible for me to 
to say that. I don't know. Um, we haven't done any of that sort of analysis. Mm -hmm. ESL is another um, question, probably. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's just perhaps more of an impression. But it might be just interesting just to go back a little and have a look and see if... Uh, but it's only of interest. I'm not in any way critical of the thought that this group be established. It just would be interesting to notice if that was a trend. Mm -hmm. I think, um, to my mind, I think it was probably an indication of the success of the CPGs that they are, you know, influencing BSL is um, another one which has been... Usually important. I'm going to bring Mr. Stewart in, uh, Mr. Johnson. I mean, I'm following on from Mr. Scott's comments. I think many of these groups can really see that as an opportunity uh, of having that dialogue, uh, of being able to promote uh, a view or an opinion. Uh, and I think it's important that they have that platform uh, and they take on both sides of the debate if there is uh, uh, options for that. Uh, but if they believe that that is what the group want to progress, uh, then I think that that should be encouraged at some stage uh, for them to have that opportunity. Uh, but at the same time, we need to be watchful of it uh, so that it doesn't become uh, just a, a vehicle uh, and an opportunity to, to, to try and affect something, uh, that it does have a, a much wider base. Uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sympathetic to what is being suggested, but at the same time, I think we need to watch. And out of the many we have, and there are many, as you know, uh, there, uh, there are some that uh, fall into that category, but others that do not. Uh, but I think it's something that we would have to monitor as a group and a committee just to make sure that it isn't going down that trend uh, as we progress through the session. OK. Um Point well made and noted, uh, Mr. Johnson. I just want to echo and expand upon uh, Patrick's points. I mean, I think that if CPGs are going to be meaningful and useful, they always come with some sort of perspective. I mean, even the ones which I think we think are uncontroversial, such as the ones concerning health, I'm sure you could find people that find some ways to sort of disagree or, or, or object to them. However, I think the fact that, that reminding uh, CPGs and people uh, finding CPGs that, that their, their membership should be open, I think, is, is important. I think the other element to that is as they're constructing their, their, their agenda and work programme, uh, again, those meetings will always have that point of view embedded within them, but there is a way to do that in such a way that, that, that meetings are open and welcoming to, to a broad range of points of view, even if those are, 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 are maybe in disagreement with the, the thrust. And I think maybe thinking about reminding CPGs of that um, and maybe as we we look at our work and, and, and in terms of regulation and, and guiding CPGs we might want to bear that in mind um, well um, we have asked um, for particular guidance to be given on certain CPGs going through um, with the committee like the clerks to come up with a form of wording that reflects the guidance on CPGs um, to be included in the letter of approval from the committee uh, content to let the clerks come up with that and um, <coughs> I'll ask if you could delegate it to me to approve um, for the I'm going out, thank you very much um, I've just got a point of clarification from the clerks actually and, and when someone is uh, proposing registering a CPG is there guidance sent to them or is there, is there guidance available to them in terms of how inclusive they have to be and so on yeah there, there are rules in the code of conduct Right. some guidance on the web page. So, so that is a bit, because I suppose in this particular circumstances, the, the co-convener who'd come along this morning explained that she'd come along in place of, of, of the person who was going to be here. So it, it may well just have been that she wasn't as familiar. She, I know she had had less than 24 hours notice that she was coming along to, to the group. So I, I wouldn't think, I wouldn't want to, uh, the committee to take it that, it that this particular CPG had planned on being exclusive in its membership. No, I, I was intending that that wording would be included in all approvals of all CBGs going forward. Yeah. No, I mean, I'd I, I take the point, absolutely, about the, the, the members' short notice in, in proposing it. I think the reason I raised it was that in contrast with the, the CPG we consider next on end-of-life choices, the remit as constructed is very specifically saying we're here to promote one particular point of view. And it is a, a point of view that relates to, to quite polarised opinion. Uh, and um, that's that seems to me qualitatively different than, for example, a CPG on housing or on uh, a particular health condition, uh, which which doesn't give rise to those those polarised opinions. So, I think in that kind of context, it's just helpful to remind all of the members involved 
uh, in that kind of group that CPGs are open to, to all members, regardless of their political viewpoint. Are we content to move forward then? Uh, can I, I ask that the committee approve the, the CPG and commercial sexual ex exploitation? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, move to the next CPG uh, proposed on end of life choices and invite any comments from the committee. Hmm? Are we content to approve that CPG? Yes. Thank you very much. And uh, finally, the proposed CPG on heart disease and stroke. And again, invite any comments. No, are we content to approve that CPG? Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Um, now move into private session.